called pastor already. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if it stopped yet. But I know, especially in my early years, by the way, Caleb, you're 24, right? Yeah. I was 24 when I was ordained, or when I was called to ministry, so whatever. And this, we can work with that, right? It just keeps crawling up on me. One thing I noticed, what I was going to mention, is that uh, for years and years and years, people would call me, well, in those days, reverend was the more official title, uh, but it turned to pastor soon, but I always got the impression people would say that, and then they would grin. <laughs> one guy one time called me up to preach in a morning service in Nuenlag, and he called up Reverend Jansen, and then he says, I get a kick out of calling this young guy Reverend. So you may get some of that. In the time left, I'm going to read three different scriptures, and they face in three different directions. I have a lot of my own thoughts and feelings about ministry. But rather than my own thoughts and feelings, let's listen to what God, what God says through Paul to a young man named Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4. In the presence of God and of, Jesus, and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be, prepare, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage. With great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. So that's like a charge to Caleb. This is Paul talking to a young man named Timothy who was starting out. You listen to all of those things in there, preach the word, be prepared anytime, correct, rebuke, encourage, lots of patience, endure hardship, do the work in evangelist, etc., etc. It's way, way too big for one person to handle. But then it isn't one person handling it, it is God. We work through God's power. It is only through God's power and God's grace that that is possible. And while we're in Timothy, one verse out of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Age is not a qualifying or disqualifying factor in ministry. We know that. Paul agrees with that. But for Caleb, there are words in Scripture that are reminders of what he's stepping into. It's a good work. Some of it is absolutely wonderfully great, and some of it's not so great. But what career is only great? <laughs> this is just different. 
So Caleb, welcome. Glad to have you here. Secondly, there's another scripture I want to read. And that one focuses more on the congregation. Today is not just about Caleb and Sharice. It's a big deal in their life, but it's a big deal in the life of Hague Community Church. In some ways, it's just as big for this congregation as it is for them. You've done this before. You've called pastors before. In 120 some years, it happens. But it's still a big deal. It's just that when we talk about the congregation, while it's spread out and it's easy to say, well, it's not me, it's, you know, so-and-so. Because it's more spread out. When we talk about Caleb being the pastor and what Paul says to Timothy, it's more specific. But for the congregation, take time to stop in once in a while when he's in his office. Give him a call, invite him out for coffee. Pray for them. Let them know you're praying for them. I heard one pastor who had been called to ministry and started preaching and all that, and he said he really noticed something change when people stopped praying for him. You notice it. So it's a big deal for the church. Pray for them. First Timothy chapter 5. Verse 11. Therefore encourage one another and build each other up. Just as in fact you are doing. But now we ask you brothers to respect those who work hard among you. Who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Make it a point to encourage Caleb and Charisse. Don't ever let them think they're doing this alone. And then one more scripture. 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. So there's the charge to Caleb. There's the charge to the church. And this is kind of a different image. Verse 4, 1 Corinthians 12. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one is given the manifestation, to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. Now, very often when we read that scripture or some of the others where Paul lists all these gifts, we naturally focus to, oh my, 
there's speaking in tongues, there's healing, there's this. So we focus on the gifts. And then when we do that, we miss the part that Paul in every t- case says, given by the Spirit. Given through the Spirit. It's always the Spirit. And I think the focus should be more on what God is doing than the things, the little packages he gives us. What I'm getting at is, ultimately, this is about the church of God. It's God who gives people, who who gifts people. It's God who puts people in positions. There is no one person who is indispensable. Because it's God who does it. It's the spirit who gives these gifts to different people. The last year or so, it's like God has been leading me in a journey of seeing how... Okay, I've always been a guy who's very strong on the free will of man. We choose, and we do. But in doing so, I've kind of pushed aside the sovereignty of God. Sure, I would give lip service to it. But when you actually recognize that God is really in charge and he's just doing stuff and he brings people in or sometimes out, it gives you a sense of comfort. It's not about me after all. It's about God. It gives you a sense of being able to relax at least a bit because it's God who's in charge. God gives these gifts to people for the good of the church. And so often God takes something we do poorly and turns it into something good just because that's who he is. A long time ago, I heard an older preacher who was retiring talk about the church and he described it like a great big building being built and it wasn't finished yet. It was under construction. And he says, you imagine this huge building. I don't know what building you would like to imagine, whether it would be a, you know, a stadium or a cathedral or something else. There's a lot of different trades working on different things. You know, the guys doing the foundation could be really, really sore because nobody sees their work. It's all underground, except it sets the tone for everything else. And there's the framers who, well, everybody says you, you can always hide the framers. It's, it, it's the guy who does the taping and the painting. Their stuff can't be hidden. And so on. You have all these different trades who all do their part. None of them do the whole thing. Everybody's doing part. If you think of that as the church, it's under construction. A lot of people doing a lot of different things. Some are noticed, some aren't noticed. We're not doing it to be noticed. We're doing it because God calls us to it. Because God has given us different things, different gifts, given for the good of the church, not for our own feeling of self-importance or anything like that. The church is under construction, still. We're all part of it. Caleb has just picked up one role that's a little more public than some of the others, but we're all part of it. Keep that image in your minds as you pray, as you think, and as we move forward. And may God guide us. Call the music team up.